this video I've never done before but it's something that I definitely wanted to do with you and kind of take you through and that's how I annotate a book. I've explained and done two annotation videos on how I annotate but I actually wanted to take you with me as I go through a book so it's like a journey together. So for this video I decided to annotate and do a reread because sometimes I find it better to reread books if I'm annotating because I miss things and I also kind of know what I'm looking for anyway whereas if I'm going into a book completely blind sometimes I struggle with themes and it takes a while to actually get into the annotation process but because I've already read this I know exactly what's happening I know what tropes I'm looking for what kind of themes and ideas I am wanting to put down in the book and make a note of so that is what this video is for this annotation video I decided to reread never by jessa hastings i got the paperback copy of this this is the american edition this is the bloom edition in case you're interested and i got it from blackwells i don't particularly like annotating hardbacks i don't mind it too much but if there's a big floppy paperback 100 percent. specifically if it's a trade paperback we're getting into specifics for this video okay not a regular uk edition paperback which is about this size just for reference this is the size of a regular uk paperback you know they're all the same size they have the same dimensions but because this is an american edition and i've noticed this with a lot of american books they tend to be physically in format larger the uk paperback this is the american style as you can see you get quite a big difference in the two and so i'm really enjoying trade paperbacks for annotation because i get more space the font slightly bigger it just makes more sense to me so the reason i chose never was because this was a five star read last month so in december i read never and i loved it and i knew the moment that i was about 100 pages into this book that there were so many things that i was picking up and i was like oh i want to make a note of that and I want to remember that ready for the rest of the series hopefully if we do get a rest of the series there are just so many moments in this book of intrigue there are so many moments of kicking my feet and giggling and screaming honestly I just really love this book if you see my wrap up you'll know that this book I'm in love with I did a reading vlog for it would really recommend you go read it this is a Peter Pan retelling by Jessa Hastings and it's the closest to the original Peter Pan by is it J.M. Barry it's if you know Peter Pan but you only know like the Disney version this is is not that you need to be aware that it's so different than that it's the original version of peter pan the barry version and in true jessa hastings style all of the characters are morally gray there's a lot of toxicity there's a lot of mystery into certain characters and the way that certain characters do things and their behavioral issues and their actions which again classic jessa hastings so i'm first going to start off by showing you the things that i use to annotate this specific book i'll do a little flip through because i'm currently 121 pages in so for this book i'm using primarily two different sets of pens using the zebra mild liners i use these every single time i annotate i'm currently going for this color scheme like a pinky purpley type of vibe but i'm specifically using the lilac one for highlighting so any quote whether it be good or bad whether it's a question that i have anything is getting highlighted with purple i then am using what are these the papermate ink joy gel 0.7 pens I'm using the pink one to underline with the purple so these are a pair so i highlight with the purple underline it with the pink and then I'm also using these to make some little doodles. I'm using the pink as my writing pen as well. So this is the primary color we're using. So this is for underlining doodles and writing. These are just for doodles and stuff like that. And cute little pictures. And like I'm drawing a lot of bows because if you know, you know. Then for tabs, these are from Amazon. I'm pretty sure if you just type in tabs, you'll see these. These are everywhere. However, I have so many different ones. So I just made my own color scheme. So this is not a pack. This is like a load of different tabs from one pack put into this. Okay, so those are all the things I'm using. And obviously the book, like I said, from Blackwell's in case you wanted to annotate your own copy of never which i'd recommend because there's lots of, lots of little bits and pieces jessa hastings is leaving in here and i'm like i've noticed that this is what my front page looks like it's not exactly what i wanted but sometimes when i go into doing a front page i struggle a lot with how to lay it out but it'll do it's fine you know sometimes you just have to roll with the punches this is what it looks like so we've got my annotation key i also added this one on after which is why it's a little bit like it looks a bit squished because i realized that i needed an extra tab which will come to in a sec but i've got the classic quote from the jay and barry peter pan that says second star to the right and straight on till morning it says never and i've done some doodles so i've got some bows going on i've got some flowers cute little crescent moon and then for this i've decided to do it slightly differently so we have some character tabs which i've never done a character tab before but because i really wanted to keep track of certain things that characters were doing in this book i decided to create a tab just for them so peter pan we've got jameson hook and daphne those are the three characters because i wanted to make a note of daphne's development i wanted to make a note of jameson just because i love him but also peter pan as a character is super interesting he's definitely the most ambiguous we don't really know too much about him and he i don't think he knows too much about himself unless he's 
lying which he could be my other tabs for this category are morally gray areas so areas where i feel a bit uncomfortable i'm not 100 happy with it i don't know why certain characters are doing certain things we've got quotes i'm sure you know what i mean by quotes we've got happiness slash other now the reason why i've put happiness is because there are a few points where i'm like oh that's like i like that i like that but majority of the time this tab is used for things that don't fit into anything else so for example if i've got a question about something like why is this character doing whatever they're doing i'm using the other tab we then have love and falling in love as a tab so things that i love but then when i notice other characters falling in love so for example there is a love triangle and daphne is with one character and there's a point where you can definitely see her falling in love i personally don't like it but because she's falling in love i'll do i use that tab if that makes sense and then finally we have sadness there are so many parts of this book where i'm like that's actually really sad so those are all of the housekeeping -y things of this book i'm going to do a little flip through now and show you what i've done so far with maybe a little bit of explanation so this is the opening page so this is a instantly peter pan the tab obviously my english lip brain came in and it's called, what does legend assume what does tales assume this is what i mean by i'm using the purple highlighter to highlight and then just the pink to underline so nothing crazy and then we get this really cute quote which i like it's got a little sun and moon and just slowly getting into the annotation this which i think is really sweet this is kind of like a sad ish scene so i won't go into it too much this is not a spoiler because this happens in the first chapter but this is when she's going off to neverland and i just think it's a really nice quote so sometimes if i have an idea about something i just write it down because i want to remember certain things about this because jessa hastings is really good at making us forget really small tidbits of information this bit here honestly made me kick my feet and giggle i loved it why did i put that tab what does that tab mean i can't even remember ah uh, yes so this is a jameson scene which honestly I'm obsessed with him and this makes me super super happy so I wanted to kind of just put some hearts cute little squiggly lines because he is my fave we then have a semi-controlling episode with Peter which gives us a lot of insight into his character so I just tapped it and I also wrote a little note about it I'm trying not to like go into too much detail because I obviously don't want to spoil the book this this is cute then I have a falling in love moment because obviously I just I'm in love that is the point we're up to now so I'm gonna take you along as I annotate some more. Um, I just wanted to give you a little run through of what is happening, but I'm not gonna do that again because that's literally what's gonna happen with the rest of this. And then once we get to the end, we'll do a flick through. But if there's any anything that changes in my annotation, obviously, I'll let you all know. But yeah, um, this is another time of me saying, if you haven't read Never, good good day good morrow so i'm still reading through never by jessa hastings i think i've got about a hundred pages left <sighs> i love this book jameson hook the man that he is scottish irish tone that he has give it to me if you've been here for a while you'll know you'll know that i have a thing about irish men i think they're incredible give me one god if you're out there give me one and this man is giving. It's the way that Peter Pan is literally the worst person ever. And Daphne's like, yeah, but like, we're, fate. we're supposed to be together. James and Hook comes in, literally is the nicest person ever. And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. She's just like us. She's a delusional girly like us. A nice guy comes in and you're like, I don't know about you. But the guy that's literally being emotionally manipulative, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's, a clear the clear distinction between the toxic relationship and the actual healthy relationship and her feeling as though she deserves the toxic relationship as opposed to the healthy one a real life scenario <laughs> for sure i just oh i just want to just live in this world i mentioned this before on tiktok but maybe not here 
I really struggle building places in my mind. I struggle with, if somebody's saying they're in an apartment, I can only base it off things I've already seen, which is why I love TV shows and I love films, because I'm gathering, <laughs> I'm gathering ideas of what an apartment would look like for a certain person. So the, this is gonna sound so rogue and so niche. When I read the seven year slip, the building an apartment that I correlated to that was the Harry Styles, James Corden, like daylight video that they did that apartment because my brain can't physically make new things. I find it very difficult. But with this, majority of this is new. It's like nothing, it doesn't exist. And that's what I love about this. Because like I said, I really struggle with world building and it's not because I have a lack of imagination. My brain just physically can't put things in certain places. I'm good with people. I know what people look like. I just blank in there sometimes and it really frustrates me because I get lost in the story and I don't know where I am. This doesn't do that. The way that I have already read this book at the same at the same point, I'm literally kicking my feet and giggling. Jessa Hastings, when am I getting to book two? I don't like <gasps> Jameson Hook. Jameson Hook. If I do not get the second book by 2025, I'll actually kick off. There is no no news on never. Nothing. Jessa Hastings has gone silent on never. Gully, I understand we I understand we gotta market my parks. I'll I'll help out. I'll do it for you. If you give me never. Book two. This is the second time I'm reading this book. And for reference, page 330. Anyway, that's my rant over. I'm just saying that I'm in love with an Irish Scottish pirate. What's new? What's new, guys? What's new? I just finished Never by Jessa Hastings for the second time. The way, the way that I love this book, unmatched, okay, unmatched, I love it, also just seeing all the hair, it's a mess, but these are all my tabs, which for some reason won't focus, and it was pain, it was pain, yeah, again, but I love it, so thank you guys so much for watching me annotate a book, I don't really do a lot of literary analysis on books I'm just reading for pleasure, it's more just silly doodles that I love, um, but yeah, and also annotation is very personal to, like, the person, thank you guys so much for watching, I love you, I love this book, and I'll see you in my next video.